The United States is a really big place. 20 million people of Asian ancestry. What's the likelihood that you're going to be the victim of a hate crime? Well, personally, I think, for me, it's low. Uh-huh. But There were only 274 last year, my friend. So for whom is it high? If it's 274 out of 20 million, for whom is it high? 330 million Americans. It's a huge country. 20 million Asians. 274 hate crimes. What's the likelihood that any Asian is going to be the victim of a hate crime? Like zero? It's not quite zero, but, but like it's not much low. higher. Yeah, very low. You would never know that, right? The hashtag Stop Asian Hate. You know, I was on Clubhouse last year, and every day on Clubhouse, it's just like, y'all on Clubhouse? Are you on Clubhouse? I don't think it's a big thing anymore. For a while it was. It seems like it's dying out. Every day, multiple conversations all day long about hate against Asians. You know, people calling me, people contacting me. You said the thing about your grand... It was it your grandma? Well, she wasn't targeted, but... Yeah, but you're afraid for yeah. her, right? If you look at these numbers, what would you tell you? I had, a, I had somebody from Canada call me, right? We were in class. We had a class going on, and the person from Canada said, Hey, what do you think about you know, we're really afraid. We live in Toronto. Like, our grandmother keeps insisting on going out walking in the park by herself. She's been doing this for 40 years. I, we don't know what to do. What should we tell her? We're all really afraid that she's walking in the park. And I don't know, what would you say to her, Sam? And what do you think I said to them? Don't worry about it. Go walk in the park. Tell her to go take her walk. It's like, what are we doing? Like, you have kids. Oh, my God, I'm afraid to let my child out in the front yard and play by himself or herself. Oh, my God, she's going to get kidnapped. What should I do? Let your child play out in the yard. Do whatever they want to do. Chances are very low, right? Chances are more likely a tree limb is going to fall and hit your child on the head probably. But, you know, whatever. We don't think about that. So this AAP, Stop AAPI Hate was a website that Asian, the Asian community in the United States very quickly put together. Because we said, like, hey, we need to respond to this, right? Because also, we know that historically speaking, I think you said this, I'm not really sure, Asians are going to be a little less likely to report certain things. So you also got to go, like, who's reporting, who's not reporting? And so Asians started to say, wait, hang on a second. We need to start talking about this stuff. We don't talk about it, right? It's just part of a, you know, especially East Asian consciousness, way of being in the world, this sort of Buddhist Confucius way, right? So people put this together and say, stop Asian hate. We're going to, we need to start talking about, we're going to start collecting the data. So let's go. So from March 2019 to June 2020, by the way, it should be June 2021, not 2020. So this is this past June. Of all the people that wrote into the website and detailed all the hate that they experienced, there were 9,000 reports. How much of the hate crime against Asians is physical violence? Comparing like the FBI numbers to like, you're saying this is people like reporting on a website? Yep, yep, yep. So I'm assuming it's like closer to like the 300-ish range. So, so of 9,000, it's pretty, it's pretty small. Paige? Yeah, I would agree with that too. I feel like it's probably a lot more verbal than physical assaults. And so two thirds is verbal harassment, right? And then shunning and avoidance, shunning and avoidance, right? So many people of Asian ancestry started reporting this. So in the workplace, people don't want to be around them. Hey, you, you, you know, you Chinese virus, right? Like you got the Chinese virus. Like, hey, we don't want to, don't be around me, you know, this kind of thing, right? So that's all, but now coughing and spitting, Right, so, so look where we're at here, right? So it, when we talked about Stop Asian Hate and all the headlines for the past year and a half, the videos that were shown, what are the videos that you see on CNN or like on the news? Elderly people like getting, pushed getting, or like head in the head or something. Getting hit, getting pushed, getting murdered, right? The, you know, the one elderly man got you know, pushed down. We had a video of that and we showed it again and again. He got pushed down by somebody, by some homeless guy. And he died. And hate is associated with physical violence. So the moment we start talking about that and we start talking about hate and hate crimes and so on, it's physical violence. But in fact, suddenly here, we're saying, wait, hang on, about 86% and then even coughing and spitting, we can like say that's just kind of disgusting, but 86% close to, it's like 
Wait, hang on a second. It's not physical violence. What does it do for us as a society to talk about these things in the way that we do in linking the, all of these crimes to physical attacks and physical violence? It kind of breeds that polarization that we saw and that we have always seen. Uh -huh. So it's like, I guess I'll speak more personally. So like if I'm a black woman hearing like black women are being attacked all the time, it brings a lot of fear into me. And if I'm always seeing it portrayed with a certain group mm -hmm. and I hear it's like assault, it's fear. And then there's always going to be some resentment. And I feel like those people who really don't want to believe that stuff does happen, it makes them angry. So if you're the group that's always being represented in, yeah. and you're someone who's against that narrative and you think it's shown too much, uh -huh. it brings resentment towards the other group. Like, oh, I'm tired of hearing you guys talk about this. This doesn't really happen. And then the opposite side is like, I'm tired of being afraid. I really hate that this is happening. We're gonna have to have laws because people will not do the things they always need to do, right? So we gotta have some laws. And it's speeding laws and this law and that law and don't bring your food into 100 Thomas because it's a pain in the ass to clean up. Whatever it is, we have all these rules and laws, right? And so, but you can only police people as far as they want to be policed. And so you can't have too many laws, right? Because if you had all the laws for everything that you really needed to adjust for, it would be like we'd have billions and billions of laws. And so you want to have as few of laws as you possibly can so people can express themselves freely but you need to have enough laws um, that really make for the good society. And so right now, I'm watching all of this hate crime laws that are coming together and Republicans and Democrats are all signing up on it and everyone's coming together to solve a problem that I think like, what's, wait, have we defined what the problem is? Like, have we really looked at it? It's like, I don't know. And so what are we looking at? And how are we looking? And what kind of a good society can we make? And this, I don't have an answer to it. For me, it's just there.